Wait, actually, I'll just I'll give you a shot at redemption. What um what is my economic position? What do I want? Like give I don't know like a sixty second summary of my basic plan. I'm a big public figure. You should know. I have a general idea. I'm assuming you want the system as is now, except with cooperatives and social democratic reform. So instead of all the firms being privately owned by uh, executives and shareholders, they are jointly owned by the workers. And you still have a market, you still have money, you still have generalized commodity production. It's just capitalism with co-ops. Okay, so that's step one, though capitalism with co-ops is a little bit oxymoronic considering private property ownership is the central tenant of capitalism. Uh, but then what do I want to do it's after also, that? It's also a tenet of feudalism and slave societies. So if we just went off private ownership, we could define feudal and slave economies as capitalist as well, which right. is the reason why we make the distinction with generalized commodity production. Exactly. Well, the distinction actually would be, see, again, you're misunderstanding Marx again. Um, the distinction would be in part Keep commodity tracking. production. It would also be in part who controls the means of production. So a market socialist society would be the first society in human history, certainly the first state, where workers controlled the means of production. Workers controlling about, the means of production would make it. Hold on. Would what make it. A, what about Yugoslavia? Yugoslavia, Yugoslavia did, had a co-op economy. Yugoslavia did a lot of really good stuff in that respect, but it wasn't perfect. It wasn't total. Um, it would be an improvement yeah, it was upon some. Up by IMF loans, and it immediately collapsed the second the Soviets were no longer a threat to U.S. hegemony. I don't know what this has to do with what I'm talking about, but okay. Well, you don't, um, know, you don't seem to know much of anything, do you, Vosh? No, I just, just I don't really it. talk about Yugoslavia because I think my economic positions work as is, and I don't need to make any weird historical, um, you know, analogies. So because the workers would control the means of production, my state, the one that I want to build in the short term, would be the first workers state or proletarian state. With selective decommodification, it would meet the description of a dictatorship of the proletariat the first society in all of human existence to have ever met those descriptions. That's the baseline the that I want to develop. And then after that, now that we control the economy, we being the proletariat, though I guess as a streamer, I'm very tentatively in that group, um, we would then go forward and selectively decommodify, and we would achieve the basic tenets of what would then be a lower stage communist state. So my end goal is basically what you claim your end goal is, except better. I actually want communism, not whatever the fuck so the Soviet know, Union did. You know, you know better than Marx then, because Marx was in favor of a planned economy. Now, what I will say is that I wait. Marx, I'm sorry, Marx. Marx hold on, Marx. Uh, first of all, I don't read text the way I do um, the Bible. Well, if Marx believed a thing, yeah. but modern data proves it to be incorrect, then I will believe the data. Marx was a very smart guy with a lot of great ideas, but at the end of the day, he was only human. He was also an anti-Semite, rather racist. I don't think any of us would disagree that those are elements of his personality we don't deify why don't today. Why don't, why don't planned economies work, Vosh? I want to explain that to you, but it would take time, and we were talking about market socialism. Briefly, briefly, briefly summarize it, because this is in relation to the broader point, markets versus planned economy. So your argument is going to be in favor of a planned economy in general. Yeah, I'm in favor of a general planned economy. Um, of course, you can't get rid of markets overnight. There's something that kind of prop up whenever you have holes in economic planning, hence the existence of black markets in the USSR. But I do believe within the context of modern cybernetics, computers, and IT, and the information age, you could plan an economy easier than ever before. Well, in fact, I how would AI help with that? Uh, well, you would just, well, how exactly would you like me to answer this question? Like how help with what um, determining economic inputs? Because I mean, there's harmony, there's harmony theory, there's uh, uh, calculations that you could do based on uh, the socially necessary labor time to produce whatever goods, as well as marginal, marginal analysis to uh, tweak according to supply and demand. The Soviets didn't, of course, calculate price this way. Um, but I would like a society where they, where we do, where it's all based on labor notes and labor credits. And everything's yeah, okay. Planned. I think I think that'd be preferable because the problem with currency as is is that um, it can be used to reify capital, that people can use it to invest and re um, reinvigorate the capitalist mode of production. Whereas, so of course, favor, through labor vouchers, so that's not the case. Yeah. So you're in favor of a voucher economy. Do you know that vouchers the long do term. not do, do you know that vouchers do not circulate? Well, yeah, that would be the point, right? They would be unique yeah, to the individual. They don't, they, they don't circulate, they expire after a certain point, and they're assigned to specific individuals with accordance to their labor. Now, market market socialism could 
be useful as a necessary step towards plan fully planned economy as you use it as kind of like this buffer zone towards a planned economy however if you just stay market socialist for decades and decades to come the long-term consequence of this will be the inevitable consolidation of wealth the propensity for co-ops to exploit other co-ops via outsourcing and uh via rents dividends and so on and finding other ways okay, to, so we've, uh, we've got a couple of points here hold on so with regards to market socialism, the goal would oh, not be to matter? have it maintained permanently. The goal would be to use it as a transition state, as I said. There are reasons why yeah. I think it's a necessary transition point. Uh, yeah, additionally, think, while it is always possible that a market socialist society could backslide, I think it's possible to legislatively prop it up in a fairly convincing way. The funny thing to me is that I think that market socialism is actually a fairly stable form of society that you can use as a jumping off point, but you defend like the Soviet Union, which never worked as a bridge to any of the larger ideas it claimed to be an advocate for. So while I agree there's always the threat of... Why are we... Well, the reason why I talk about the Soviet Union is was for all intents and purposes the first attempt at a fully planned economy and a, a first rough well, shot planned economy. economies have been around so for millennia me, that's me, that's well, not yeah, new yeah but it's, it's it's part of socialism planned economy plus societal ownership of the means of production there's other components as well but what i would like to say is you have a nation that at the start of the century was literally semi-feudal it was a backward semi-feudal agrarian peasant backwater that became an industrial superpower and saved so the world from fascist terror. we're doing we're Using doing it again wait first of all let's not talk about the uh the uh, soviet axis talks i'm huh? talking about saving the world <laughs> those fuckers nearly joined them